two apocalypse tips with us the pips that's this show that you're watching which hey good job you found it i don't make it difficult to find i do blast it all over the place so i'm glad that you did but also it wasn't a big accomplishment i don't mean to start cutting my audience down before y'all even get here but seems like i did sorry um what you thinking when you're at home right now watching the show is probably who the heck is this guy why the heck am i watching his show what is twitch those are all value, valuable questions for y'all to ask yourself. I'm not gonna explain Twitch because you already found it, um, but I am gonna tell you who I am, what the show is. And what the show is, is it's a show called Apocalypse Tips with Lester Pips, where I'm the Lester Pips. And ooh, 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 Victor Crackobain says, ouch, I'm out. Oh no, Victor, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm glad you're already in the chat. I'm glad you're hanging out. Uh, and listen, I was just talking about other people in the chat, not you. Um, but if other people in the chat, I wasn't talking about you either. Um, now, what the show is, is it's a show where I make sure y'all know how to survive apocalypses. Because there's so many out there, you know. We could have a big time apocalypse from like major rainfall that's too much rain. Like a, like a Noah's Ark situation, that's an apocalypse. We could have an apocalypse where it's like there's a big space mountain that explodes. And then we get lava from, from like the Mars lands or something. Like Mars lava comes, hits the Earth. That's apocalypse. It could be just as simple as there's a lot of COVIDs in the air right now, and that's kind of an apocalypse in a way, which is why I'm in my bunker. Uh, if you're looking behind me and you're thinking, wow, that's a space age crazy ass bunker. Well, I don't usually swear, so I'm sorry. I just did. Apologies to uh, anybody who doesn't like the word ass. Um, uh, but, um, but yeah, that's not my real bunker. Just a hint. That's a fake bunker. That's just a hint for you. I just wanted to hint that to you. That's a fake bunker. Why I'm showing you a fake bunker is because the one behind me is specialized to real, uh, to <laughs> is special to me, and I don't want you to get jealous of it. Because look, this is where we get into who I am. It's very important that you know. Uh, I prior to all these COVIDs being out there trying to get up inside our lungs, uh, eat them from the inside. Uh, I was a guy who would go door to door to any microphone that was open that I could find, which primarily was stand up open mics in the Los Angeles area, but I've been all over the world uh, uh, talking about how you all is going to survive apocalypse. I am what I call a doomsday prep lecturer. I'm self-proclaimed as a renowned one. And I do think of myself as an expert on how y'all survive apocalypses because in 2005, we here in Louisiana, which is where I am, uh, and where this accent is accurate too, if you could not tell, uh, discovered that there was a big old hurricane called Katrina that destroyed New Orleans. And after that, I was like, uh oh, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta make sure that I know how to survive if there's ever another, like, if there's like Hurricane Katrina Jr. But Jr. turns out to be bigger than Senior, which um, <laughs> newsflash just, just friggin' happened, y'all. Uh, so if you was in Louisiana right now, like me, but not underground like me, I hope you're okay. Cause wow. Uh, wow. Eastern Louisiana, Western Texas. No, wait, all the way around. Uh, no, wait, I was right. I don't know geography too well. Uh, either way, if you're in a bad part of the country that got hit by the hurricane, I feel bad for you. Uh, and I want you to be okay. Uh, you should have got yourself in a bunker. I've been telling you that for years, but I still feel bad for you. Um, uh, why did I transition into talking about myself before I finished talking about the bunker behind me? I'll explain because I'm not just a doomsday prepper. I'm a doomsday prepper from Louisiana. Okay. I believe that the most important thing we got to consider in how we're going to survive an apocalypse is what matters to humanity. And obviously, the most important thing is Louisiana culture. And so, being that that is true, we got to make sure we have the most important parts of Louisiana culture in the future, which obviously are the recipe and all necessary ingredients to Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Tricy Chicken Strips. Because who wants to live in a world without them spicy chicken strips? Not me. We got to represent New Orleans in the future. We can't have future generations of humans thinking New, New Orleans culture tasted like trash. No. So behind me, behind this, this, this facade here is a fully functioning Popeye's Louisiana Chicken Spice Trick and Trip franchise location, which look, I will let you see it, but I don't want you to be jealous because it's going to be real hard for you to build that in your bunker right away, right? I've been working on this since 2005, okay? That's at least 15 years at least. So, I mean, there you go. Now, I do see a couple of folks in the chat here. Mint++ plus plus says fire, 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 fire. And then Popeye's 
either spicy face or a crying face. Look, if you see me lean off screen, that's just because I'm trying to get closer to the chat window so I can see what the people are saying. Because I got to be honest with you, wearing sunglasses inside makes it hard to read, but I will never take them off because you never know when all of a sudden the sun might explode and your eyes get hurt. Even if you're in a bunker, if the sun explodes, too bright, too bright. You're going to get hurt in the bunker too. Um, so yeah, just forgive me for that. I did move the chat window over a little bit, so I won't be looking over here. I'll be looking over here, but still, I'll be looking. Anyway, if you're in the chat right now and you're thinking, wow, this character on the screen right now, and I say character in the sense of like, people call me a character sometimes because I'm a little bit wacky, not because I'm a fake human being portrayed by an actor. Um, uh, this character on the screen right now has so many interesting facets to who they might be. And you want to ask any questions? Do it. Throw them in the chat. I'll answer them. And guess what? Coming up later, I got some guests who you can also ask questions of. I'm very excited about my guests today, by the way. Later, lastly, at the end of the show, we're going to meet the maid. That's all she said about herself. But man, am I excited to talk to her. Prior to that, we're going to meet anthropologist and author Ramiro Caliente, who, boy, I, I don't really, I don't think I've read any of his books, but it, if it turns out that I have, I'm very excited about that. And then Almost in a, in a couple of moments, the first guest we're going to talk to is Jada Rodriguez, uh, a, a writer, actor, and princess, which that should be very exciting. Um, but we're not there yet because this is the part of the show that is new and near and dear to my heart. Um, this is the part of the show where I offer to you in the chat the opportunity to make a difference, okay? Because look, recently I found out that Popeye's Louisiana Chicken, that's not exactly a great company, okay? Oh, that's not exactly a great company, it turns out. Mint Plus Plus says that lineup is strong, and I absolutely agree. I'm very excited about it. Uh, Popeye's, not a great company, all right? They donate some money to Trump, and it's probably just like a couple of franchise owners who do it. I don't know how the money works. I just know that money goes from people who spend money at Popeye's to the Donald Trump. So, oh my God. Oh my God. This is the first week in a long time I've been able to say that dude's last name. <laughs> He's losing power over me. This is fantastic. Okay, but let's move on. Uh, it, it's not the case that I just forgot to not say it. It's the case that he's losing power over me. Now, um, uh, let's get to the, the opportunity that I was mentioning is, look, we's not spending money at Popeye's no more. I'm not going there, giving them my cash, saying, hey, I'm going to figure out this recipe. Also, can I just buy the recipe from you anymore? Uh-uh. Instead, I'm telling all y'all out there, if you want to get your hands on this recipe, send it to me, help make there be Louisiana chicken in the future. Well, I got the blueprints to every single Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen franchise location, and I will tell you how to break in. All you have to do, name a Popeye's in the chat, and I will tell you how to break into it. Now, in the last couple of shows, we've only had one or two folks who actually had a location in mind. And I'm really hoping that, <laughs> that in this show, there's somebody in the chat who's like, hmm, I wonder if there's a Popeye's in, say, the city I live in. I I'd love to break into that one. And then just name that city. And then I'll tell you how to do it because there is. There's Popeye's locations in 48 states plus DC. That's a lot of Popeye's. Okay, and it looks like maybe it's not gonna happen. Looks like my vamping isn't given enough time. So I did prepare one to talk about. Now, I don't know if y'all ever been to Salt Lake City, Utah, but they got a Popeye's in the airport there. Oh, 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 the Popeye's by USC. Yes, thank you, uh, Coweed Coke. Uh, Coed22, I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the Popeyes by USC. Yeah, okay. So the Popeyes by USC, I, I got that one here. Hold on, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. I'm just doing some, some pulling it up. But I'm pulling up. Okay, I pulled it up. So the Popeyes by USC, right. So that one is right on campus, actually. And the only way to break into that one, there's a secret tunnel beneath the anthropology building on the USC campus. Wow, it's crazy that we have an anthropology, uh, anthropologist on the show and this is an anthropology building. That's, what a random coincidence that has in no way connected. Uh, there's a tunnel underneath the anthropology building on the USC campus that actually goes directly to the shopping center where this Popeyes is. And it was not designed to break into the Popeyes, but if you dig a little hole when you get under the Popeyes, you can absolutely get up in there, okay? Because the way that grates work is sometimes they lead down into big tunnels. And in this case, there's a grate underneath the Popeyes that leads down into a big tunnel that you can be in, okay? If you go into the anthropology building. 
or the U.S. bank. That's why it's there. There's a connection between the U.S. bank and the pop and the, and the anthropology building because, as everybody knows, anthropologists are big stealers. They do a lot of robbing. Anthropologists are known for being big robbers. They take a lot of money out of banks and um, they invest it in uh, uh, knowing about cultures and stuff. That's what you need to know about anthropologists. I don't know if that's true of my guest later who's an anthropologist. I don't want to cast dispersions on him before he gets on the show. Uh, but I will say that that's what anthropologists is known for. And in this case, that's what they were doing. So you dig up your hell way through the tunnel, you get into the Popeyes. Uh, uh, it's a drain, uh, it's a grate that's in their bathroom. Okay, so you get up in there and then all of a sudden using the shower in the bathroom in the Popeyes. And I know you're probably thinking, why does a restaurant have a shower? Well, let me tell you, this Popeyes is real good to their employees. Not everyone is, but this one's got a good owner. So they got a shower in there for employees because after you've been doing a lot of grease frying, you're just gonna want a shower. That's just true. If anybody ever worked in fast food, you know you want a shower. Um, so right, so you get up in there and then once you're in the shower, you gotta steal a little bit of clothing, okay? Not a whole lot, just a little bit. There's a couple, there's gonna be some leftover Popeye's t-shirts, aprons, maybe a couple of boots. You strap those on, strap on those boots, tie on the apron, you get out there and you say, um, hello, uh, I, I work here and I'm supposed to have the recipe real quick. And then they'll real quick give you the recipe. You go back down. Don't go, excuse me, don't go back down to the gate because if you walk into the bathroom and disappear, they'll be on to you. But if you say, my shift's over and you walk out the back door, you're home free. All right, I hope that helped you, Cowie22. And if you do get that recipe, you send it over to me. I'm at Lester Pips on Instagram and, and Twitter. Uh, uh, or my publicist at Ezra Pardia on Instagram or at Ezra Pardia on Twitter. Uh, uh, you're welcome. Yes, I'm hungry too. Crazy, because I, look, I've been trying to get this recipe for so long, but I haven't got it. So all I got down here to eat is cream corn. I got tons of cans of cream corn. Uh, and it's frustrating because that's not what chicken is, you know? Cream corn, not chicken. Now, listen, another thing that's not chicken is my first guest, and I'm real excited to get to her. Uh, I assume she's not a chicken. Actually, you know what? She might be. I shouldn't rule that out. I don't want to rule out anything about my guests before we meet them. Although I have already cast one as a, a big time robber, which sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but my first guest is uh, a writer. She's an actor and she's a princess. So let's get her on the show. Jada Rodriguez. Jada Rodriguez, if you could join the stream. Hello. Hi, Jada. Hello. I, for some reason, am suddenly incredibly nervous and my hands are sweating. Oh, oh, okay. Listen, let me tell you something. You have no reason to be nervous, okay? Because what we're doing is we're just talking about what your life is. You right. You know about that, right? Yeah. You know about your life, right? I know about my life. Okay, well, great. Tell me about it. Sure. Um, let's see. I was born in New York, raised oh. out in L.A. Boo. Um, you boo in L.A. right now? <laughs> yes. Why is that? I hate it here. I hate it here. I'm only here because of my career. Otherwise, I'd be in Paris. Well, you've got a whole big castle. What you talking about? You do you like this big castle? Oh yeah. Well, that's my um, fake little castle to make me feel like a print, like a real princess. Wait a minute now. In, when I asked you how you wanted to be introduced, you said writer, actor, princess, and I thought, oh wow, <laughs> she's a real princess. This is so exciting. Listen, you, you lied to me. I did lie to you, but here's the thing: you have to fake it till you make it. You just you keep telling people you're something, they'll eventually believe it. That's, I mean, hey, I believe it. So you yeah, 100% exactly. right. Exactly. You believed it. You introduced yeah. me as one. So I'm one step closer. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I just got to convince, convince like the Queen of England they use one of her daughters. I mean, I don't know if I want to go to her. They just seem like they're, they're struggling. That's a good point. Yeah. If you, know? if you could be the princess of anything, what princess would you be? Um, I'd be the princess of... I don't know, something, oh, maybe Canada. That would see, that seems nice. Yeah, they're technically a monarchy because they're still under control of the queen somehow. But, you know, that's cool. I guess technically then you'd still be the queen of England's princess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know where else I would go. I mean, I'd want to be the, I'd want to be a princess in like a Marvel film. Ooh, okay. Okay, like, 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 uh, well, let's see. The only one that I can think of is Princess of Wakanda. I'm not sure there's any other kingdoms in the Marvel movies. Let me think. I, I literally have like a Marvel Bible in my 
in my apartment. I'm looking at it. It's over there. I don't think there is. Oh, I'm hearing in the chat that my mic needs to be worked on. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Jada, if you want to tell anything to anyone, do it. Hi. <laughs> How's everybody's day? I can't see what people are saying, so you'll just have to tell me. How's your day going? Yeah. How have you? Oh, uh, you sound great. I, thank you. Yeah, I think I fixed it. So yeah. uh, at WizWorld Live in the chat, thank you so much. And, and let me know if it's fixed. Oh, it is. Okay, great. Well, that was, look, you know what? This has been happening to me lately. And I do think it's because uh, down yeah, here in the bunker, uh, you know, when you. Tell me about it. Say again? bunker life. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So, well, down here in this bunker, mostly what I'm doing is I'm I'm up on the uh, <laughs> uh, Mint Plus Plus says Robot Pips was a feature, not a bug, but it doesn't sound clear. Oh, it does sound clear. Okay, that's good. Well, yeah, Robot Pips is an alter ego of mine, but we don't okay. have time to get into that. We got to just <laughs> talk about. Uh, well, I think the mic thing is is just a weird thing that's been going on. I'm not going to get too into it. Uh, but because uh, we're not here to talk about me, we here to talk okay. about you. Okay. Um, I don't think I would survive. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to let it be known. Uh, in the Marvel movie? Oh, <laughs> no. I made a jump. I don't think I would survive in this bunker, in the apocalypse, Oh. in both situations. Well, that's just a question of preparedness, right? Because, like, if I was in this bunker without any cans of cream corn or big jugs of water, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't survive either. But I got a whole big bunker with lots of cream corn and water. True. I guess I don't have it in me to move into a bunker, so I'm fucked, you know? I'd love That's for you to point. send your That's location and then I could join, you know, if anything happens, oh. it's up to you. I don't wanna be. No, yeah, my bunker location is, is well known. I, I live in, uh, my, my bunker is in the backyard of my wife's house outside Baton Rouge, <laughs> Louisiana. Um, she is the district attorney for the state of Louisiana. So, you know, you just Google state of Louisiana district attorney house. Ignore the fact that it says it's a white man. It's not, okay. it's my wife. Um, there's definitely, it's definitely not the case that Louisiana has never had a female DA. Uh, cause my Got wife it. is the DA. Uh, and yeah, she, so the bunker life is tough because she won't come down. Cause technically we are illegally separated. Um, but I'm a happily married man. So I'm, I'm, you well, know, I'm very Okay, I'm so sorry. Bunker. So mm -hmm. do you guys speak or have any sort of relationship at all? Yeah, so there's a nanny cam in my son's room. Uh, <laughs> that I do okay. watch a lot. And in that way, I feel connected to my family. Okay, so you didn't answer the question. Do you guys actually communicate? The last time we spoke was on this very show uh, where she go gave me the ultimatum that I had to come move into the house if I wanted to keep our marriage alive. And I said, I can't leave the bunker. Oof. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I do no, think you're okay. a little maybe in denial, which is totally fine. Well, look, the way I see it is I'm happily married. But I don't think that's the truth of the <laughs> situation. So I, I feel like maybe that's something that needs to be addressed. By know? whom? Who would address that? By you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What about you? Is you happily married? I'm happily single. Exactly the opposite. Happily, merrily single. Maybe someone in the chat wants to marry me, propose to me, now's the time. Um, uh, yeah. Well, uh, so far, no one in the chat has said that they want to marry you, but I bet now that you've thrown it out there, Somebody okay, might. Uh, Wizard World Lives does say that he's watching Denial Tips with Lester Pips, which is, which is interesting because <laughs> I don't personally think I'm in denial and anyone who tells me that is wrong and I won't listen. Okay. Uh, okay. It's okay. We just have to warm you up to a place where you can like learn to accept that you are divorced or in the process mm -hmm. of no. getting divorced, but that's fine. We don't have to rush it. Take your time. Like grief is a, is a long process. So look, the thing that ties us together, me and my wife, regardless of what happens with the separation, regardless of anything else, is we have our son, who she named John, but I call Bubba Gump. Uh, and okay, about your son, you're you're not even raising him. Well, I tried. I did. I have a okay. Let me tell you a little bit about this bunker. Yeah. Well, you can't see it, but uh, I got a room for my son. I got a room for all of his friends, which I did tell him to go to school, ask him to come live in the bunker. And I have a room for me and my wife and a room for the ghost of Dr. John. How old um, is your son? There's a nanny cam, but he has friends. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking 
five or what, what exactly? Yeah, my, my son's a seven-year-old boy named John, uh, but I wanted to call him Bubba Gump, so I do. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to know about him. He was going to school. They just started school up again, so I've been watching him try to learn online, which has been, you know, he's pretty good at it. He's a pretty smart little guy. But needs to be monitored through a nanny cam? Well, technically, it doesn't need, he doesn't need to be, but I have no other way to see him. Okay, so at least your ex-wife does grant you that. Yes, she is aware of it. She's okay with it. This is not some kind of creepy situation where I'm spying on a little boy. Okay. My own okay. son. <laughs> okay, good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she wants me to have a relationship with him. She just wants me to do it above ground. But you're not doing that. Right. Well, because it's too dangerous out there. Somebody's got to make sure that there's Popeye's Louisiana Chicken Spice Chicken Chip in the future, you know? So I'm doing, I'm doing the Lord's work as I see it. Uh, as they say in the movie Blues Brothers, I'm on a mission from God. Oh, Lester. Now, Jada, uh, we've talked a lot about me, which I love doing, but I yeah. don't want to talk about you. Uh, so you, you, what's your COVID life been like? Sure. My COVID life has been uh, a lot of reading, um, trying to learn about French, um, painting, hiking. Oh, you know what I've been doing that's sort of embarrassing is I've been um, going on um, YouTube and there's this guy. Okay, I'm also a musical theater kid. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I can't sing, but I love musical theater. <laughs> um, so by musical but, theater kid, you mean a musical theater fan? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, I used to do it when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Well, then, oh, okay, yeah. So you was okay. a musical theater kid. Now you're a mu musical theater adult, which I think all yeah. musical theater adults are just fans. Other than that, if you're not a musical theater, if you are in musical theater, then use an actor or an actress or something. Okay, then I'm a musical, musical theater fan. I'm but, glad we got to the bottom okay. of that. Will you just please bear with me? And I'm going to sing you the first song I ever learned of. Oh. for my first musical. Please do, yeah. <laughs> it's about Thanksgiving. I played the main character. And that's all I'll get. Okay. okay. Right I don't like turkey. <laughs> I don't like turkey one bit. It's the food I don't like and that's it. If you call me to eat and turkey's the meat, then I won't want to sit, sit, sit. Because I don't like turkey one bit. Wow. I don't know why you are calling yourself a musical theater kid. You should be calling yourself an opera singer. <laughs> so that was my first um, ever musical. Thank you so much. But um, so what was I even getting at? Oh, so there's this guy on YouTube. Oh my God, I wish I remembered his name so I could plug him. But all he does with his whole YouTube career is he makes like duets, like the, any musical theater song you ever wanted to sing, he'll sing the other person and oh, wow. then you sing that person. But it's very fancy. I'm going to have to, no, I'm not going to remember. Oh, no. I'll give you a second to remember it while I, I read a little bit from the chat because uh, oh, no. uh, Wiz World Live says, drag that turkey. Uh, uh, Eli <laughs> says, theater geeks unite. Uh, Mint Plus Plus says, clap, clap, clap. Thank you uh, so much. And I think, I assume everybody else is clapping with their real hands at home because, I mean, how could you not be clapping for that? They're so nice. I thought they were going to... Um, say really hurtful things. So thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate that, everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, I just, I feel a little bit bad for you because it sounds like you don't have a good time at Thanksgiving. Well, okay, this is her arc is like, she's like, no, no turkey, which is like so ahead of it, its time. I was like six years old and they were already talking about, you know, being vegan at, at Thanksgiving. Wow. Revolutionary. Anyway, so she ended up making a pizza. That was, <laughs> that's the whole musical. <laughs> I mean, hey, it sounds fun. I mean, you get to make a pizza on stage. You get to sing about turkey. It yeah. sounds like a good time. I assume you made a real pizza on the stage. I did not. We, we had my friend pretended to be the bread. And then everyone and then the whole rest of the class were different ingredients of the pizza. And then wow. at the end, they all slammed together and a pizza appeared. Wow. It's so corny. Listen, I don't want to critique whoever put this play together, but um, having your pizza be made on bread, that's a mistake. You got to get crossed. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I just misspoke and said bread instead of crust. What is it called when it's, when you roll, dough. dough. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Look, it seems like it seems like uh, living in this castle has gotten to your head. You don't remember what dough is. You don't know. Yeah, how to- I'm too fancy to know anything a- anymore. I uh-huh. just let my servant in my head because remember, it hasn't happened yet. But I'm gonna right. work my way up. My right, you got you gotta act like you's already a, a <laughs> who doesn't have to do anything for herself. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I just do that in my head, and I tell myself it'll all pay off when one day this all self actualizes for me. Well, listen, I can't wait for that day. Uh, I hope you come back on the show when you can show us a real castle sometime. I mean, thank you. I, I hope you have a relationship with your son, and and you move on from your ex wife. Uh, well, I, I do have a relationship with my son and I'm happily married to my ex-wife. What well, ex-wife? Who said that? It's the first step is happening. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> huh. Well, uh, well, listen, Jada, I mean, this has been real fun. I, 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 I liked, uh, hearing about what it's like to be a big time princess. I like, uh, you challenging me a little bit on some of my own issues, which you know, <laughs> at the same time as I said that I like it, I also am like, hmm, I wish that would stop and I didn't have to feel things. Right. Um, Wizworld Live does say, Lester, we support your growth. And I think that's more in support of you than of me. Um, but <laughs> look, we do have to get to our next guest here on the show, which yes, would you be interested in sticking around and, and maybe- Yeah, of course. Them? Okay, great. Well, before we do, uh, I do, between every guest, I always go to my, uh, my publicist, uh, gets questions from folks on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, my publicist is at Ezra Partier on Instagram or at Ezra Potter on Twitter. I know him. I'm a big fan of him. Oh, that's interesting. He did tell me that his number one fan was coming on the show and I assumed that's it was me. either the anthropologist or the maid. No, it was me. Oh, well, that's very nice. Yeah. I'm sure he appreciates that. <laughs> now, uh, the question comes from at Jada RX Driguez. Oh, well, that's wait, me. that's you. Yeah. Oh, that's you. I asked the question. I mean, I saw your publicist saying I, anything your publicist says. I, since I'm a huge fan, I just I wanted to help out, so I came up with these questions. So please. Well, thanks for doing that. You you asked what was your relationship like with your father? Which <laughs> wow, I do wish that I got to this earlier because we don't have very much time left. But um, uh, well, let, let's talk about it. So, uh, it was good. Okay, that's all. I mean. Yeah. I just there's so much trauma and repression in you. Do you? Oh, huh, interesting. Uh, well, look. Okay, I'll tell. I'll tell you a little bit more about. It. So, my dad's name, or uh, I've said on the podcast, on the show before. Um, so, if you want to remember what it is, listen to. Go watch every episode and figure out what it is. <laughs> um, uh, no, I can't, I can't remember what it was. Uh, <laughs> I've repressed every memory of my father. <laughs> okay, including his name. Yeah, don't remember his name, don't remember what he looked like, don't remember where he lived, don't remember a dang thing. What Do you remember your father? I do remember my father. I remember his name, what he looked like. Hmm. That's lucky. Oh, I mean, this is just so heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, I really wish I had done my research on this. Um, <laughs> on yourself? <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, I, I wish I had done that. But we don't have time for me to get into it too deep, so I apologize for this being uh, kind of a lame answer. Um, because we do have to get to my next guest, which, <clears throat> you know, maybe, uh, let, me, let me do this. For all the listeners out there, I will take note of this question and, and provide a better answer next episode. Um, uh, but right now we do have to get to the next guest, which is uh, a, a great guest. Uh, the anthropologist and author I mentioned before, Ramiro Caliente. Ramiro, please jump on the show. <sighs> oh, God. <clears throat> oh, oh, Ramiro, are you all right? Hello, Lester. I am Ramiro Caliente. I am a Tapabascan anthropologist and author. Oh wow! Well, yeah, that is that's exciting. What is that? What is that? Well, most of my research centers on an ancient element known as liquid destiny to the first men, <laughs> also known as the ancient Pangaeans of the origin continent, Pangaea. Wow, I didn't, uh, so there was humans on the continent, Pangea? This is 
Correct as the research shows, Lester. I, I've written several novels about this very subject, which if you're so interested, you can elucidate yourself. Um, my first book, Journey to Pangea, mm. My Life in the Sauce of Ghosts. Your life in what? My life in the sauce of ghosts. In the sauce of ghosts? This is 100% correct. Okay, so uh, you, you're talking about like the primordial soup of the universe? Soup is a more recent invention. I, if I were to ask you, if you were talking about Babe Ruth, Mm -hmm. I'm and not. then I said, oh, oh go on. Do, do you mean Travis Jankowski of the Cincinnati Reds, backup outfielder? That would be a preposterous connection, although they are both technically baseball players. This is to illustrate the distance between your analogy of soup and the ancient liquid of Tapabasco. Okay, so Tapabasco is uh, 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 is the ancient liquid, uh, the, 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 the sauce <laughs> of ghosts that you talk about? This is correct. Hmm. In the days of the Panjains, we all lived on one continent, as the research shows. And what research is that? Because as far as I know from reading every book in the whole world, except for yours, apparently, is that that's not true at all. Well, if you had read my second book, Sauce Code, Uncovering the Liquid Legacy of Pangea, we wouldn't have to preface this conversation. Did, did, uh, yeah, that's true. If I had read your book, then you wouldn't have to tell me what was in it. But I haven't. And I'm finding it confusing because as far as I know, uh, Pangea was like a bunch of bunch of continents jammed together, but it was not because it was one continent that then separated into the ones that we have right now. But mm. but uh, the dinosaurs was on the lands that we like that were like between now and Pangea, and there wasn't exactly humans and dinosaurs at the same time. That's my understanding. Again, to use my apt metaphor, you are trying to give me this year's statistics for Travis Jankowski of the Cincinnati Reds. And I am interested in Babe Ruth, the Babe Ruth of life, energy, and power, also known as Tapabasco, the ancient liquid of destiny, which was united at one point in time and spawned life, and as the weight of humans caused the tectonic plates to shift. Whoa. The recipe was split in two. And for generations and centuries, the recipe has existed in halves. Hmm. This is fascinating. Yeah, wow. I didn't know any of this. And I'm really curious to learn. Uh, uh, how did you, so did you do, so, okay, wait. So you, my journey into the sauce of ghosts is your first book. So did you actually travel back in time into Pangea? I downloaded a world map <laughs> software <laughs> Wait. and I was able to travel from my station here in Pacoima, California uh -huh. to many other places around the world, effectively covering all of Pangea as it is spread out in this day and age. Uh, it's actually my exploration process is revealed in my third book. <clears throat> Do robots dream of electric hot sauce? Question mark. <laughs> Colon. A 22nd century analysis of the future of Tapabasco as it pertains to Android identity, politics, and rights. Wow. Huh. Technology, huh. I believe, is the future of Tapabasco. It can be written into code and placed on a computer. And when man is placed into a computer with the Tapabasco code, that is immortality in essence. 
Cool. <laughs> now, Jada, it seems like you uh, uh, are kind of resonating with this a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm, he's so enthusiastic that I'm intrigued, but I think the more pressing matter is that Romero, you look horrifically sick. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I do, and I don't use this word. This is the word that's been ascribed to me by my medical team. Okay. I suffer from year-round post-nasal trip and 24-7 heartburn, as well as living terrors. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but as I said, I, I consider these positive uh, side effects of having personally bad. unlocked the, the recipe for Tapabasco. Huh. Okay, that, that makes sense, I guess. Um, although I'm not familiar with living terror. I know night terrors, but what exactly are living terrors? Living terrors are when you're hallucinating objects that are almost identical to what is actually presented in front of you. So in this moment, I am terrified by the sight of this ring light <clears throat> oh. placed in front of me. Mm -hmm. But do not be alarmed for I have the recipe to vanquish this ring light. Oh my god, no. Oh, oh. It's uh, that's Tapabasco? So you just eat that all the time. So your whole diet is just Listen, people have told me that my diet is too oh one-dimensional <laughs> since I only <sighs> eat cream corn if I, unless I can get my hands on uh, uh, on some Popeye's Louisiana cheese, my chicken strip. But it seems like your diet is just this, like, Tabasco sauce. The union between jalapeno peppers and vinegar unionized with uh -oh. red peppers oh, okay. and salt have been the elixir that's presented itself throughout humanity's history. Anytime there's been major advancements uh, culturally and technologically, Ponce de Leon searched for the fountain of youth. Oh. Oh, boy. Men Pifeter Ramses I, also known as King Ramses, founding pharaoh of ancient Egypt's 19th destiny, research shows uh -huh. He was eight feet tall and could lift a car. Whoa, really? <laughs> that's crazy, because, uh, okay, hey, I hope, I hope that's that. You know what? Watching you cough so much is making me cough, which is weird. <clears throat> Excuse me. More recently, the last known person other than myself to have discovered this ancient recipe was the guitarist of the pop-punk band Rufio. On their first album... He utilized the power of Tapabasco to play his guitar very fast. Mm -hmm. So have I been saying it incorrectly? It, I've been saying Tabasco my whole life. To use my very apt analogy about <laughs> Cincinnati Reds outfielder Travis Jankowski, <laughs> you have been saying Travis Jankowski your whole life. If you combine Babe Ruth with Travis Jankowski, you will oh. unlock the secret formula for Tapabasco. <clears throat> like oh. penicillin, I have been trying to release this for no proprietary or monetary gain of my own. I believe this is a human right. Wow. Now that I understand what's happening, I am so on board. Okay, because I, I, I firmly believe that every, everything that folks need to eat should be de de delivered like penicillin and just given out to everybody for no monetary gain. 100%. I do believe, however, that in an apocalyptic scenario where a majority of human life is removed from this mortal coil, mm -hmm. we'll unlock, unlock the first step to the the tectonic plates rising and reuniting as Pangea. So I do not support actual medicine being released for free. You Just a way to bring back Pangea? 
Yes, that is correct. You son wow. of a bitch. Excuse me? <laughs> you ask me again. Let's see what happens here. You think that there's a way Shut to unite, your... re make Shut your mouth. I'm just trying to clarify what you're saying, man. I'm 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 on your side here. I, well, I'll... okay. Oh. I've had this exact conversation with people who've asked questions like you, and I found myself tied, binded. My legs were binded, and I was left outside of a oh Panera bread. <clears throat> Well, listen, I have no intention of tying you up and leaving you behind a Panera bread, okay, because I'm not leaving my bunker, right? And also, I don't feel that kind of aggression towards you right now. I, oh. What I feel is just like massive concern because it seems like you're dying from the inside out. Uh, and also, you know, mild curiosity because this idea of uniting Pangea again sounds kind of cool. It's the coolest thing there ever was. Well, but we want you to be alive for it. I don't know how, how long you'll stick around with this diet. I completely agree. What did you just drink there, Ramiro? Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> this is blood orange soda from Trader Joe's. Oh. Oh, yum. <laughs> I had that before. That's real good. It's the only thing my intestinal tract will tolerate. Oof. Oof. Yeah, it sounds like you've done quite a bit. Now, AC Improv in the chat did think that that was going to be more sauce in that glass, and I got to be honest, that's yeah. what I thought, too. Uh, Wizworld Live has been seriously enjoying this. I, I want you to know that, Ramiro. Wizworld Live is learning a ton, and so is AC Improv, by the way. Um, Lester, you're sounding weird again. Oh, no! You just started, though, so... Yeah, I don't know what the deal is there with this go. mic, but I think I'm back. Yeah, you're back. I just had a yeah. horrible living terror <laughs> that your voice <laughs> was crackling. Ramiro, that was actually real. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's a problem with my mic where sometimes I have to plug it, unplug it, plug it back in. But Ramiro, listen, I, I really hope that you can... Um, it seems like your living terrors are maybe connected to the fact that you've eaten so yeah. much hot sauce, and it seems like your intestinal problems are also connected to that. So maybe just like eat some bread. Okay, once well, while. why don't you keep copying everything my medical staff says to me? <laughs> copycat. Hey, you know, I didn't intend to be a copycat, but when it comes to preserving human life, sometimes the best thing to do is say what the medical experts say. Ooh. Wow. Mm. And now, isn't that relevant? Interesting, interesting. Now, Ramiro, we do have to get to my next guest, but I hope you, I'm hoping you will stick around and maybe participate yes. in that that as well. Um, do I, do, I do I preserve my status here on screen? Yes, yes, you can stay as you are. Right. Uh, yeah. um, but before we get to, to them, I do have a question coming to me from my publicist at Ezra Potter on Instagram, at Ezra Potter on Twitter, from uh, at PowerSelling101. Who, uh, oh yeah, that's the guy who runs the uh, uh, power selling, uh, uh, eBay power selling show here on this very packedeater.com slash Twitch on Wednesdays, who looks kind of like, hmm, you. What is this? This is in San Antonio? Yeah, that's out of the San Antonio uh, 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 community center or something like that. What is this man? <coughs> what is this man? I was, uh, my legs were binded. Outside of a Panera Bread in San Antonio. Uh oh. Well, I'm. I'm I hope it's not the same guy. Uh, you better pray this guy's, it's not. This guy's, <laughs> this guy's name on Instagram is at Power Selling 101, and he wants to know how come people in the Bible could hear God's voice, but we can't hear God's voice today. And I'm so glad that this question was asked of me. Uh, you know, not like one of your biblical scholars or something, because a biblical scholar will give you some kind of roundabout answer. But I will tell you the truth, and that is that God is tired. Mm. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a that's a little joke. Sometimes I make jokes on this show. It's not a comedy show. It's an educational show. But sometimes I do jokes. Oh, did yeah, you? Were we supposed to laugh? <laughs> you were okay. not supposed to, but I really would have preferred that you did. Now, um, uh, what the real answer I think is that um, people back in the old days didn't know how to explain what was going on, so they made up this idea of a god being there to to kind of uh, make them feel more comfortable. But you know what? Uh, if I'm wrong about that, well, I'll just be punished in hell for the eternity. Ramiro, what do you think? I believe that 
the voice of God is around us at all times. We simply have to ingest the right stuff for it to hear it. Interesting. Interesting. I don't, listen, I am self-aware enough to not outright just say the thing everyone knows I'm alluding to. Mm -hmm. Ayahuasca? No, liquid gold. Bitch. Oh, you have, do you have zip ties in your in your pocket there? I do have zip ties in my pocket, but they are only for making sure that all the uh, uh, all the bags of all, all the cream corn cans is just properly tied shut. Um, but listen, Ramiro, uh, I don't have time for you to threaten my life again. Uh, I actually have to get to my next guest. Um, uh, but yeah, stick around. Now, my, my next guest and um, my next guest, I'm excited to introduce. Uh, she told me to call her the maid, and so I will. The maid, please jump on the stream. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> uh, bonjour. Oui. Uh, I'm trying to pinpoint you. There you go. Uh, I, I don't speak French too good, but uh, it seems like, uh, you know, I might have to, which is a challenge. Tell me. No, that's French. okay. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> the maid, your house looks amazing. Oh, this is not my house. I cleaned this house. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, that's, that's cool. Uh, is, uh, is, it, is it COVID safe? Oui, because I clean it so much. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh. Well, what, what's what's it like being in in a big old house during all these covids? Oh, it's awful. <laughs> I ate it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We. Oui. Uh, the truth is, I'm trapped inside the trope of a French maid, and I can't get out. <laughs> oh no. Oui. Oh, no. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that. Is this some kind of spell made by some kind of evil French witch that we could break? Oui, that is exactly it. So I don't know if they were French or not. <laughs> wow. Uh, every time you hear me giggle, I'm actually crying on the inside. <laughs> oh, no. That's terrible. The maid, I'm so sorry. The, the maid, um, is, is it reinforcing your prison if I just keep calling you the maid? Is there another name I could call you? No, that's fine. I don't remember my real name. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, I'm so sorry to hear that. I mean, how long have you been in this house? Uh, this house, uh, two years. <laughs> two whole years? Uh, and the way you said this house made me think you meant that maybe prior to this house, you was in a bunch of different houses? I don't know. My memory fails me often. <laughs> no, is the last thing you remember moving into this house two years ago? Uh, I remember being uh, uh, transformed, so to speak, into this. And then getting a job is a maid in this house. <laughs> Whoa. Listen, I don't want you to have to relive past trauma, but if you could, what was that transformation experience like? Uh, let's see. It's hard for me to remember. Uh, I believe it was... Uh, oh, yes. I had just lost my job, whoever I was. Mm -hmm. And I was very hungry, so I went to a bakery and I stole a croissant. Oh, mm -hmm. no. It was very foolish of me. And I ran out of that bakery and the baker, the owner, he followed me. And so I ran and I ran and then I ran into somebody and then it was a witch and they cast a spell on me. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, gosh, I hope there's a way that we could uh, lift the spell. I mean, we do have a fairy tale princess and an author on the show. So maybe oh, no. there's something- Oh no, that's okay. What I would like for you to do is to kill me. Oh no. The maid, listen, I haven't killed anyone since a, that one accidental vehicular manslaughter in 2007. Oh, oh, that's okay. That just means you're capable. Well, I can do it myself, but I cannot. I, 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 I don't know that I'm capable, you know? I, I've never been able to do it on purpose. I've never wanted to do it on purpose. It was one, just one bad accident that my wife covered up for me. You have a very nice wife. That's, that's true. That's true. She's great. Uh, we're happy. Um, but, you know, I, I am, I, I am worried about you because if it's, if your only escape is death, then I mean, that's, that's a harsh re reality to live in. Surely there's something out there that might be worth living for if we could break this curse. Oh, no, I am just a maid and nothing else. I would kill myself, but every time I reach for my neck, I can only grasp my own breasts. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate because that's, yeah, you can't really kill yourself with those. No, I reach for the gun and I pick up the feather duster. Nothing works. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's, that's a miserable existence. I mean, it is. <laughs> uh, uh, Jada, Ramiro, do you have any ideas on how we might be able to help the maid kill herself? Oh, maybe the soup? <laughs> have you tried to purposefully caress your bosom and see what happens? Oh, yeah, if you an go, inverse... That's smart, because maybe if you try to get your boobs, you'll end up getting your neck. Oh. This heinous wizard... It doesn't work! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. Now, okay, let's think about, let's think back to the witch thing. Cause if we could break the curse, I bet you will remember the things you like about your life. So we don't have to kill you, okay? We, we just have to break the curse. So let's think about this. The witch you ran into was in the, you was in France, you said, and you, you stole a croissant. Maybe you have to steal another croissant and then you'll I run into the witch. I that I was in France, but it was a witch. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Boy, I mean... Do you know a witch? I know about witches. I don't personally know any witches. Um, yeah, because I, I'm... I mean, I, yeah. I, I don't personally know any witches. Uh, Jada, you're in a fairy princess castle. Do you know any witches? I don't know any witches, but I was thinking, you know, who would create someone with this very bland existence that seems, you know, over-sexualized? And all I can think of is some white guy um, screenwriter who just like graduated um, college. So I- Oh I, yes, I, the witch was a man, I forgot to say. <laughs> I figured. No, honestly, I, I assumed. Figured. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's something we, this guy and his script, he needs to stop telling people about it at his parties, but I don't know how to locate him. You don't think that this is maybe like a stranger than fiction situation where it turns out that uh, the person who is in the house with you is the person who's writing the story this whole time? I did not think about that. Is there anybody in the house with you, the maid? Yeah. Mm, not at the moment, no. I just, uh, I clean it and sometimes there is a family here. Mm. Right now they're on vacation because they don't care about COVID. They're rich. Oh no. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> Maybe it's the husband, right? What? Maybe it could be the husband of the family. It's gotta you be. Know? He's like writing these this screenplay behind his wife's back. I don't Wait a know. minute. I Let's don't know. Go. It's difficult to say, but he is rich, so he might not be a screenplay writer. You know, I'm I'm looking <laughs> around the cool. house behind you and I'm looking at that painting and I'm pretty sure I've seen that painting behind a picture of Crystalia? You're not in Crystalia's house, are you? I don't know. But he's not in... married. Well, he might be bringing families over. We don't know what he's up to. True. Whether it's Crystalia or not, I may have a suggestion for you, the maid. Oh, oui. If you are indeed living in a white man screenplay, you must, you want to leave it, you must do what, something that will make you incredibly unattractive to him mm. and the only thing that comes to mind is be in control of your sexual pleasure and agency oh i would i would but i cannot i cannot you when i touch fight. my breasts i don't even feel it oh my god that's because touching breasts is what a man would do think of what you would do you don't have to perform it on screen because I understand that's a precarious situation to lay on someone. I'm so glad you said that because I was about well, to. I would do whatever it takes. I just, I, I, I try to put my hand <laughs> below here and I cannot. Try using your mind. Sometimes they say women can use their mind to do well, it. Mm. I, I try, but... <laughs> Think of a good book. Shoot, I wish we had I wish we had enough time to get to the bottom of this, but we only have a couple of minutes left. So uh, we are gonna have to either solve it real quick or, or just pray to, to uh, the God I don't believe in, but some of you might, uh, that uh, that we can free up free up the, the main. Oh, oh, we have a good we have a good suggestion in the ch in the chat. We've had actually had a very active chat that I haven't been able to read much of, but uh, 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 AC Improv says maybe if you think of a good book. 
because a, a man would never write a woman reading. Right. I just said that, you son of a bitch. Are they you? were quoting me, Lester. Oh my God, what is going on in my brain? Are you trying to bind my legs with I a bunch of cords? Anything. Is that your plan for me? Well, I, when you I said use your mind, I thought that's what, oh man, wait. I'm so sorry. Uh, AC Improv is chiding me for, for not knowing that because uh, everyone's right that I was wrong about that. I'm so sorry, everybody. I wish I had more time to be angry at you, Lester. I wish I had more time to repent. <sighs> I wish we had more time to help her. She cannot live in this man's screenplay. I completely agree. You could kill me. I don't uh, think we can. Do you age? Do you age no, in the state? No. Oh, Wizard Live says maybe if the guys try to grab their own breasts. I mean, we could try. If it would help me, that would be wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you don't have to, but no, your own, your own, Ramiro. Okay. Is it helping? Are you feeling anything? No, just a sense of wanting to ask you what I can do for you. That's really it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, well, wait, 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 I've got it. Oh. What you can do for me is break the curse. Yes, be allegiant to this man and break your curse. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but then I'll free you. It's still a, it's still the, the dynamic is off. Damn, I, I know. think that Damn. I'm breaking. I don't know what to do. Oh, okay, well, I'll tell you it's what. Working. It's working. She, she, she doesn't know what to do, which means she doesn't feel the need to clean. Oh, well, we're making most progress. of the time I don't know what to do, to be oh. fair. Oh, shoot. Uh, well, the maid, we don't have any more time to try to solve this. I wish we did. <laughs> I really wish we did, because I want to save you from this, this existence. It sounds terrible. And, and honestly, you seem like probably before becoming the maid, you're probably a great person, so you should probably be free. Oh. But I, possible you were a decent person. Yeah. Who knows? Who I'm knows? just curious. I assume everyone's great until I find out they're not. A lot of people are disappointing. Um, but we are out of time, so uh, we got to do this one last bit of the, bit of thing that we do on the show, which is uh, Jada Rodriguez. You have. <laughs> Wizard Eyes says fucked up to leave the maid this way. I know. I'm gonna rack my brain while we do this last little bit of the show. It's been years. Um, it's fine. No, it's oh. not fine. But Jada somebody, Rodriguez. Somebody will kill me. Jada Rodriguez, is there anything you want folks to find on the internet? And do you have any last words of advice for folks on how to try to try to uh, so survive all these COVIDs in the air? Um, uh, wear a mask, stay safe. Um, and what was the other thing? That's all, I guess. <laughs> Those are great things. Those are great okay. things. Um, R Ramiro Caliente, same questions. Anything you want people to know and look for? Anything, uh, last words of advice for folks? Go on uh, Spotify and look up the pop punk band Rufio and then rewatch when I said that as a reference so you could understand it. Yeah, because I do have to hear everything you say <clears throat> twice. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. Uh, and The Maid, anything you want folks to find on the internet? Any advice? Oh, we oui. uh, Don't run in the street and then into a male white witch for one and also i've heard that there is a podcast that's very good i personally cannot listen to it because it's hosted by two women who respect themselves so my ears don't hear it but it's called forever babe and i've heard it's very good <laughs> that's that sounds great now uh I, I don't have time to get to the question but uh at meg joe j a j o h uh is definitely one of the hosts of that podcast and also somebody who submitted a question to this show. Uh, i apologize for not having time to get to it um actually wait it's a really simple one it's red vines or twizzlers the answer is twizzlers red vines melt in the heat um uh y'all thank you so much for doing this show the maid we're gonna we we should maybe just like chat afterwards to find a solution. oh you know what Next time I run into a female witch, I'm gonna send her your way. That seems like a solution. Oh, right? really? Women helping Thank women. you. We. Oui. Okay, that's the best we can do. Um, Y'all, if he's watching, thank you to everybody who is doing that, watching. Appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who's on the show Jada, Ramiro, the maid. And uh, thank you to the Pack Theater for hosting us. Y'all, stick around because coming up next, we got a show called uh, 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 Your Cousins, which is an improv show, I believe. Uh, I think I got it wrong. Oh no, I don't want to be wrong. Play Cousins. Yes, that's what it is. Play Cousins Improv. Uh, it's going to be fun. They've got, oh, pack performer Ricardo Feliciano, who 
Interesting. That's at Power Selling 101, who we talked about earlier. Uh, okay, I got to get off the stream now. So what we're going to do is just we're going to get off the stream. Bye.